Hi, I'm Simone Somek, and a few months ago I took a series of videos to talk about my trial for a DRG stimulator produced by Abbott. Those videos I hoped would help uh, uh, people who were thinking about undergoing their trial or they were thinking about getting the permanent stimulator and I am so happy to see that many people have watched those and that some of you might have found them helpful. I actually received a lot of messages about those videos of people asking me, hey, can you please tell us what happened afterwards? Did you get the permanent implant? Answer is yes. Did it work out for you? Are you happy with it? How is it going? How was the uh, recovery process? So I figured it would be very important for me to record um, an update video about my experience with a DRG stimulator, a dorsal root ganglion stimulator. I have my stimulator because of my CRPS, my complex regional pain syndrome in my left foot and ankle. So my DRG stimulator hits the ganglia in L4, L5 and S1 in my spine. I did get my stimulator in September and then in May, about nine months after I got my stimulator, one wire broke. So this is really in a few words my story, but I want to go into the details and talk a little bit step by step about the process of how it went. After the trial, I got my permanent implant, as I said, in September of 2020. Um, the surgery went well. It's a very long surgery. I think it was three, four hours. I did it here in New York City had to be really patient after the surgery for many reasons. First of all, you have to be careful about not bending, not stretching, not twisting, not lifting your arms too much. For about 10 weeks, my doctor told me, Simone, better safe than sorry. You don't want the wires to the leads to move in those few first few weeks where when you have a greater risk of them moving so you want to be really careful about it and i was careful about it i was actually so scared about them move uh, moving and then the about the idea of having to undergo surgery again i really did not want to undergo surgery again now the surgery is obviously much more invasive than the trial and as you may recall if you watch my previous videos the trial was already quite an experience it was really painful and uh, the surgery is just like the trial in terms of inserting the wires into the spine but then they cut into whatever wherever you're going to get your generator your battery and they cut your skin, they cut a little pocket in your body, and mine is in my lower back, basically my butt cheek. And they cut a little pocket and they insert the battery in it. The battery is not small, it's quite thin, but especially the first few months, you're so aware of it. It's just, it's not a secret. It's, um, it's there. I think my doctor really placed it well. I was uh, personally pleased about where it was. Um, it didn't, uh, the first few months, weeks in particular, it affected my sleep. I felt like I couldn't sleep on one side and then I learned how to sleep on that side too. You really, we, we're human beings, we, gotta, we can adjust to anything and this is not such a big adjustment to be honest. It's, uh, especially the first few months, it was, the area was so sensitive. My nerves were so sensitive there and I just, even touching it, was irritating me. Nine, ten months in, I can tell you that you get really used to it and it's truly not a problem to have this device in your body. I had to take, certainly take a whole week off from work after you get this surgery if you can because it's, it's just, you have to lay down a lot, you're going to take a lot of strong painkillers, whatever, it's a surgery, you know how it is. Did it help? And this is tricky because, first of all, I had to be so patient. When you get the um, stimulator, you meet with uh, the technicians from the company that produces the stimulator and they do certain adjustments to the frequency of, the, of how the generator sends the uh, electric impulses into the spine. How strong, how, how, much, how long do they last, like all of that. And that is uh, like 
going into a casino and playing, <laughs> playing some sort of, you know, gambling device, whatever it's called, because there are a million different combinations and you don't know right away, at least in my case, I didn't know every time I went in right away whether it was working really well or not. I felt it, oh, this is hitting the right spot, this and that. What I learned, first of all, it took me so many months and so many adjustments to find my sweet spot. The second thing that I wanna say is that with time, I did learn that lower is better. When you adjust you know, the strength of your leads, at the beginning, when you have the machine and it's new, you feel like you need it stronger because your brain tells you, I wanna feel this, I wanna be aware that there is something helping me. With time, you become a little more mature, you get to know the uh, device better, and I think that you, at least in my case, and I know in other people's cases, you do realize that a weaker impulse might help you better and that's what happened in my case and I didn't need to feel the tingling in my foot to know that it was there, that it was helping. There was in particular one wire, one lead that didn't seem to work well enough, did an x-ray and it was positioned well, so I don't know, I definitely know that uh, one of the leads was helping me much more during the trial, so I don't know why it did not seem to help as much as it did in the trial. Was it worth it? Yes, I didn't get the benefit that some lucky people get, that they, their life changes and they can go do a million things. I did not. I have not the most severe CRPS, but a pretty intense and severe CRPS, so I barely walk around, I just do, I'm lucky enough to be able to walk, but I walk just three blocks and that's it, and that for a couple of days, I don't have, I don't leave the house because it's too much. And even in the house, I sit most of the time. Did it allow me to start walking more? A little bit, yes. I started doing longer, taking longer walks. I started doing them with more frequency. And also I started going to physical therapy, which I had not been able to do before. I had the stimulator in and I had a wonderful physical therapist here in New York City at a hospital for special surgery. And he really did understand my limitations. Now let's go fast forward to nine months after the surgery. At that point, I'm not scared that the wires will move anymore. And my doctor gives me the green light to move more freely. Uh, he tells me, yeah, of course you can exercise your upper back, like your upper body. Like, yes, of course, do this, do that. So I start still very worried and very cautious, but I start doing more exercises. I start for my upper body. I started feeling a little less scared. I bend much more. I start picking up objects from the floor more. All of a sudden, what happens is that I am away, I'm on a vacation, we're all vaccinated, we're excited to travel again, go to Montana to see our friends in Montana. And I, I immediately knew there was something wrong. And I felt like, why, why is the simulator not helping me right now? Like, is there something wrong with it? Anyway, that evening I check um, the, the app and it says that one of the leads, L4, which was the lead that helped me the most, the ankle one, cannot connect. And it says, I cannot connect to this lead. Um, if this issue persists, call your doctor. And I'm trying not to freak out. I say, you know what, it's late at night. It's Let's just go to sleep. And then when I wake up in the morning, if it's if it persists, I will call the doctor right away. Woke up in the morning, same issue. It was, it was not connected and it said I cannot connect. So I call the technicians, the representatives from Abbott and I tell them, and I, I'm trying not to freak out, but I'm very scared because I say, if this means that I need to get surgery again, I am really not excited about this. They tell me, calm down, don't freak out. As soon as you come back, we'll see you and if needed we'll take an x-ray bottom line the x-ray shows that that lead that is not working anymore is broken it just it bent and it was it cracked almost i don't want to be dramatic right now it was pretty terrible though i was they immediately told me honey you need to get surgery and i'm like 
surgery you only need the wires right like you don't have to open up the pocket where the battery is and they're saying no we do because we need to connect the new lead to the battery on top of that in the x-ray they see they discover that the battery has flipped so it goes <laughs> it's upside down they say we've never seen anything like this what's going on i'm just shocked i'm just shocked that this happened i don't understand how it's possible that the battery because i'm just so cautious and i it's not like i was playing golf or it just was very puzzling i am extremely frustrated with the device the company i feel that there has to be some more research and development and they have to look into it i'm sorry how is it possible that the wire physically broke it it doesn't make much sense to me. I want the device back. So I am going to get surgery to fix that wire and it's next week. And then I'm gonna have to undergo the recovery process all over again. I'm not excited, but I'm hopeful and I'm really worried. I ask myself, what if this happens again in eight months, in nine months, and are you gonna get surgery again? And my answer is probably not at that point. I hope these videos are helpful to you because there is not much literature. Is it worth it? Absolutely. If you are struggling with this monster of a disease, you should do whatever you can to fight it because no one deserves to live in so much pain and have so many limitations. We have to fight and fighting is not easy. Going to a million doctor's appointments, going to a million appointments with the technicians, the representatives to adjust the stimulator, going into surgery again, these are not easy things. Each time we lose a little bit of hope because we become more cynical and we feel that why should I believe that it's gonna work out this time? However, if I can, I just really want to hug you virtually and give you a lot of strength in your fight. And if needed, I will keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.